I had just gone through a normal routine. I called home to check on the baby um, while I was at work. Her father had said, you have to come home. The baby fell off the couch. So I immediately left work, went home. As soon as I walked in the door, I knew we need to go to the hospital right now. Alita had injuries that the father couldn't really explain. It was found that he inflicted those injuries. You know, Tara wasn't present during the incident. However, because she was in a relationship with the father, she was penalized as well. You know, I was doing the right thing, and I would do that again in that same situation. I would not change a decision that I made to take her right there immediately. Her father got upset while at the hospital and left us there. Um, and so I was left to deal with the aftermath. At the, the time, I just, you know, you're definitely in shock. I'm worried about Alita. I'm worried about, you know, is she gonna be okay? Is everything gonna be all right? Like, yes, do all the tests. Yes, do whatever you need. And then I have all these people with badges coming in talking to me. and. In my mind, I'm thinking this is all protocol, this is all procedure, everything is going to be fine, everything is going to be fine. Um, and part of that protocol and procedure was to remove her from my home. My daughter was in foster care for about seven months. Tara was referred to family reunification team to help with the transition of her daughter. She was being reunified after the removal due to physical injury. She had worked different tasks to, in order to get her daughter back, and we provided the support services to ensure that it was a safe reunification. What Gulf Coast did in coming in for reunification was really help reestablish. No, I'm a really good mom. I make sure she's on a routine schedule every day. I make sure she has everything packed every day. So even the small things really reestablished my confidence back that I needed as a mom. Tara is one of the most incredible humans I've ever met. She is so resilient. It did not matter what obstacle came in her way. She was going to fight for her daughter until the absolute end. I felt depressed and upset and angry and injustice. And I think allowing them to have their five seconds every day and then mustering up that strength to say, okay, it's time to get ready. You have to go to work because if you don't go to work, you, you may not get Alita back. Okay, now you have to go to counseling. You have to do the hard work there because if you don't do that, you might not get Alita back. I discovered in me that I can dig down deep and I can power through. And I think only does that set a good tone for my home now. I think that sets a really good tone as a mother for my daughter because I'm the first example of a woman that she's gonna see. I'm the first example of an adult that she's gonna see. And I think it's very powerful for her to see that you're gonna go through some really dark and terrible times where the storm is gonna rage, it's gonna be a bunch of darkness and you're not gonna see any light, but you can do it. Uh, personally, starting from my childhood, life wasn't easy. As you know, Africa, we have a lot of conflict in different countries. I've been a refugee since I was a child and I've been moving from one country to another. We struggled for having something to eat, having clean water. It was kind of like hard life. After being in the camp for so long, the United Nations, they receive new arrival refugees and they give opportunities to the old, old refugees who have been in the camp so that they can leave the place and have opportunity with other continents. The first day I saw Felician, he was different from other refugees. He was not afraid to talk to us. He was actually smiling asking questions. He was ready to, to learn. The golf course, they started helping us in many kinds of ways. We came in, they took us to take English class, they registered us and they, they could take us to different places to show us how we can uh, move ourselves to the next point. The program assisted him with basic needs employment, health care services, and connected him with the community for further resources. So Gulf Coast, they are well trained in everything that they are doing, and they are so professional. Uh, because they always give the best, 
they continue to be around us they never abandoned us they are always willing if we cry and say hey we don't know what's going on they say okay we're gonna show you we're gonna find out what's going on and we're gonna find the right person that you are going to meet and uh, your situation is gonna be better golf course i really appreciate them i really appreciate their help as well as many other that has been around me and it's helped me in my life I'm a German Jew. On Hitler's birthday, we arrived in Auschwitz in 1943. On the way there, we, did, we were all still in good mood, didn't know what's happening to us. There was a camp, and people in striped clothes walking around. They said, oh my God, look how many gangsters they have there. You know, we said, my God. So we think we're going to go on. But... The truck turned right and then left, and in the same camp we <laughs> were. And ten minutes, maybe half an hour later, we looked the same way that uh, they did. When I realized that this wasn't the community that we were supposed to go, <laughs> after a while, when, when it sank in, we seen people dying, people gotten killed, you know. Then we knew... That was bad. Once in a while there were auslese, we called it, where we had to strip naked and walk past the doctor and they checked what our ass looked like. If that goes, there was no more hope, you know. We didn't know the first time he went this way, this one, this way, this way. And when some of my buddies that went that way, we, we never seen them come back. Then it dawned on us that this too went to the crematoriums. I was about 95, I was 70 years old. I started painting again because I needed something to keep up the, the morale, you know. Daily life doesn't contribute much to great spirits, you know. So I started painting women, you know. And once in a while, the landscapes. And um, that was very gratifying. So tell us about, there's a one painting in particular, There's it looks like it's at the camp. Can yeah. you tell us why you painted that? A little bit about that painting? That's, I wanted to... We create the feeling, you know. I painted faces the way I felt we must be looking. It doesn't look like anything like us, but the expression, you know, I, ho I hope to portray. The body that we carried, he, he couldn't walk anymore, you know, so we carried him. But... After a while, we had to let him go because we were ourselves. And whoever got dropped got shot. We couldn't carry him anymore. So that's why when going back to the painting, I said to hell with it. <laughs> I can't. Everybody says, paint, paint, do it, you know, and I can't do it. Whoever wants it can have it, and I can't do it anymore. It's just unimaginable uh, what he lived through in Auschwitz, in Buchenwald, in six years of slave labor. He has um, found his contentment in living independently um, in his treasured home. I have this house. It is on a reversed mortgage. I couldn't afford, you know, the house. If not for Gulf Coast, I wouldn't be able to live here. The Holocaust survivors, it's a unique population in that things that other people might take for granted will actually be a trigger and bring on possibly some trauma from their experience in the Holocaust. You know, they can live, stay out of a nursing home if we're able to 
have people coming in and, and giving them that support. Nursing homes and institutional living can be a very scary option for them. People in uniforms, people uh, slamming doors, people preparing a suitcase, these are all things that you know, really can trigger some trauma for them. If I had to get into a smaller place, let's say, I'm so used to it now, you know, since 77, my own, I can have the paintings around me, you can look at the paintings. That is a good, great relief to me. Without golf course, I don't know what, what would it be, you know. I'm very grateful to them.